God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there. Because he Hello, St. Paul family, and welcome to our online broadcast for the sixth Sunday of Easter, and it is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers and motherly figures. Um, I have been so blessed to uh, kind of have two lenses to, to view motherhood. I have been the recipient of my mother's love, which, my gosh, just years of the most consistent, powerful um, care and concern and I don't know where I'd be without my mother, so praise God for her. And then I've had the, the blessing of getting to watch my wife become a mother, and I'll never forget uh, the first couple, starting from the very first <laughs> time we heard that heartbeat, uh, just this fountain of mirth and joy and excitement and love that she would cry and laugh at the same time every time she heard Arla's heartbeat from uh, the instrument that Dr. Spate would use. So praise God for such a... Uh, biological momentum towards love, but also such a spiritual, uh, novel role that we get to experience uh, indirectly, in my case, and directly uh, in, in my wife's case, in my mother's case. And praise God for all you mothers and um, his brilliant idea in creation. So happy Mother's Day. I, I do want to say that we are going to hear from Father Terry at the end of this video, so please stay tuned. It will be our first time hearing from him since uh, his unfortunate injury um, and thankfully a successful surgery. I know it's, the recovery is difficult, but we are praying for him and excited to hear from him. So stay tuned. He will be uh, addressing us all here at the end of the video. Um, and I will just uh, open us up in a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, uh, we just um, praise you for the wisdom with which you made the world, um, and we ask for you to show us that more clearly, uh, get us excited for your vision of things. We praise you for our mothers, and um, we just thank you so much for such a wonderful aspect of being human. Uh, we also just ask for your presence and your direction as we open up your word, and uh, we just ask that you stir up our hearts um, with the music and the ideas, and we just ask to be closer to you uh, today and throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, the gospel reading this week is in John chapter 15, starting at verse 9, and I believe it goes through verse 15, so we'll, we will read that together. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends, for all that I've heard from my Father I have made known to you. All right, this is the word of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord. Um, we'll just start at the top and kind of work our way through it. I know I touched on this last week. Um, last week, if, if, you have, if you were at the, one of the later services or tuned in online, um, I kind of got into these verses because I'm so excited about the passage. Um, but anyway, it has been such a humbling honor and challenge speaking, uh, getting the chance to speak f- uh, with, with the church. And I just want to thank you guys for your patience with me. I know very much a musician, but this has been a good stretching uh, challenge. And praise God that we are saved by Jesus and what he's done for us and by not our ability to either interpret or relay it. But like Paul, I, I, I say I preach Christ crucified, that, um, that, <clears throat> that I'm, not, I'm not resting on anything other than his work. But it is so fun to get excited about that uh, with you guys and to try it in all these new mediums. I know there are a lot of challenges out there, but the online ministry and the small church, and I just can feel God's redemption in so many little little aspects of, of what seem like setbacks, but praise God for his uh, redemptive power. So we'll just jump right in verse by verse. Uh, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So we get this idea that Father, it's, that, that reality is almost like a multi-layered fountain, that the Father is this source of love and it overflows into the son and that he connects us to the father's source that he overflows love onto us. And then we can spill out on each other and on the world. And that should be, um, that should be happening, uh, in our lives. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I I touched on this with a funny little example and I'll, I'll reiterate it, but, um, Uh, it, it, the idea is obedience. He says, if you keep my commandments, that, that we are abiding in his love. And I know obedience sounds like a horrible, boring, uh, rigid word, but uh, in the context of a loving relationship, it's actually the most exciting thing. I'll never forget dating Annalisa, and she lived in Texarkana. And I would drive three hours to go see her every, every couple weeks. And it was so exciting. I'll never forget. I pulled up one time and she answered the door. She said, I had a dream about you and you were wearing a certain kind of boot uh, in the dream. And she said, they looked so cool. And I'll never forget, man, she, at dinner, she took her first break to the bathroom and I had ordered those boots on Amazon. And you better believe I showed up with those on. The next visit, just put my leg up and said, I'm here. You know, uh, I had seen a glimpse of the desires of the heart of my beloved and I was eager to find I was eager to find ways to to please her because of the love that I had. And I believe that sincere reflection on what God has done for us in His Son, not only in His Son, before in in His creative wisdom and gift, uh, in just reality and making us and giving us life, but then also in His redemptive power through through Jesus, that any sincere reflection on all of that, the only proper response will be an overflowing of love. And the way we express that is we we hear his desires and his commandments and his word. And we look for ways of, of pleasing our beloved. So we, we keep his commandments and abide in his love. <clears throat> I know that um, this has been challenging for me too. You know, it's so fun to think and be brooding as a songwriter and get theological. Um, but all those things are meaningless if you have not love. We've heard that from Paul um, in many different ways. But um, so, so, Lord, Lord, we ask for help in, uh, in plugging into the true vine so that we can, we can overflow with love like you do. Um, these things I have spoken to you, that, that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Now, this is uh, very, much, very much like what I was just saying, that the, the <clears throat> culmination of, of, our, um, of the lover's joy is to, is to uh, serve, serve the beloved. But he says this... Um, 
so that our joy may be full. He doesn't say, just do this for me because I want it. Reminds me of lose your life so that you will find it. He never says, just lose your life so that, so that you will lose it because this is just about sacrifice for sacrifice's sake. He has our good in mind. And uh, I thought of this C.S. Lewis quote from Mere Christianity um, that just came to mind, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with you guys. Um, he says, God made us, God made us, invented us as man invents an engine. A car is made to run on petrol, and it would not run properly on anything else. Now, God designed the human machine to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn, or the food our spirits were designed to feed on. There is no other. That is why it's just no good asking God to make us happy in our own way without bothering about religion. God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from himself, because it's not there. There is no such thing. And uh, I, just, I just think, what a, what a brilliant way to put it. I know that oftentimes in our modern society, we can come up with all kinds of creative ways um, to be like, like one of the thieves on the cross that said, if you're really the son of man, then do this for me, then get us out of here. Or if you're really God, uh, then, then do blank. And, um, and, and, that is, that is not uh, a proper lens through which to view the situation uh, that God designed us to run on himself. And gosh, I can attest to this. I've, I've tried to find ultimate happiness in just about every activity I've endeavored, <laughs> ever endeavored into. And uh, it, can be, it can be cosmically frustrating. And praise God that there is actually a free peace, joy, and identity in him. And it's, it's right there. Um, it's right there for for us to grab onto. So he's doing this for our good, that, that his commandments are actually so that our joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. And here it is, just that, that overflowing of love um, that God, God, has, God and the Son and the Holy Spirit for all eternity have doing, been doing this, as C.S. Lewis might say, a dance of giving giving glory to the, to the others. And he invites us into this dance where, we, where we, uh, we learn to lift other people up, to meet their needs as creatively as we would meet ours. Now, we are obviously not as, as good at that, and God is patient with us, but growing us up into this, into this dance. Um, all right, you did not choose. Oh, no, I went too far. No longer do I call you servants, for servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I've heard from my Father, I've made known to you. And this is so beautiful about the kingdom of heaven. I know that most kingdoms that we run into, for lack of a better word, um, it takes, it's almost like the, the closer in you get, the more secretive the info. I mean, this is true. I mean, even in our personal lives, we have, we have PR statements that we make through social media, but some people really know what's going on, and, some, and they're just layers of access and God is the opposite. God, God shines light into his kingdom that everyone has access, um, that his plans are made known, that we are invited into the heart of things. As C.S. Lewis says, continue to go further, further in and deeper in. It's all free access. It's unlike any other power source or source of glory we've ever seen. I mean, normally you just go to a good concert and... Um, you just go to a good show, and you, you, I mean, you might be able to get a good glimpse of the artist, but, but you, just, you, ne- you never really get to know what's going on. And here is somebody much, glory, much more glorious than, than a great musician or a, a great whatever. This is the Lord himself, and he has made himself fully accessible, like a mother and a child um, to us. So praise God. Anyway, um, I just uh, encourage us in light of the last, uh, this whole chapter with Jesus being the vine and God being the vine dresser and us being the branches that plug in to Christ. I just encourage you and myself and all of us to, to drink deeply from the, from the life source through the branch that is Jesus and to find daily ways to live loved by him and to find ways to engage, uh, engage the world through his commandments. And we will bear much fruit as he promises. There is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do 
I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you none like you not one like you not one like you your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes in your name helpless children are safe in your arms there is none like you there is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you None like you None like you Not one like you Healing comes in your name <laughs> Helpless children are safe in your arms There is none like you Greetings and blessings to my beloved St. Paul Church family. I wanted to say hello, give an update on what's going on with my leg, and to, um, again, just say thank you. Uh, what a, uh, an amazing thing it is to, to know how many people have been praying for me and um, bringing meals and sending cards. It, th truly, I feel the, the love from the St. Paul Church family. Um, overall, my leg is doing well. I broke both bones, but they're surgically repaired now. And I go back on Monday to uh, get a, a, a progress report and, and then look forward to getting back into the swing of things fully. Again, thank you. Blessings to all. And we will see you soon. Love you, St. Paul.